Issue 285. Speedy asks his father why they don't close in for the kill, and his father says that Eggman has them on a strict timetable. So, Speedy's smarter than his father. Sonic lands on the Sky Patrol with Bunny because the tech geniuses got the thing airborne again, so Sonic wants to check on everyone. Sonic finds Sally, who seems injured, and says they should get down to engineering and see what's going on. Rota tells T-Pup to find another energy cell, and he tells Sonic he just started damage control. And this is when they have the pretend fake-out death scene with Nicole, I remember. Which of course is fake, because even Flynn knows he couldn't get away with killing off Nicole. I don't even know how she did do badly in that fight, or whatever the hell happened to her. That kind of death would be too confusing. Not even two panels after they worry about her. She tells them with mere text that she's doing what she can and the thrusters are at least on, but she needs to concentrate. Tails says he wants to help Nicole, and Sally tells them to start with long-range communications. Emerald hits Behringer, and Fang has the time to tell Bean that they're only stalling Emerald so Metal Sonic can escape, and that he plans to blast Emerald for the badniks to finish him off. Wouldn't he be heard? Then Cream lands on Bark's head, and Emerald thanks her for the save and calls her kiddo. Fang decides to retreat, taking the Freedom Fighter seriously. Emerald tells her that there are about a hundred badniks to protect the city from, and Emerald warns Sonic that the Emerald's keys were taken. Rotor asks Sonic to grab some essentials, and Sonic says he doesn't know what he means and will keep running back and forth to get him stuff, and Bunny says she can follow directions and try to help with the engines. Sally asks Antoine to get her aspirin and help Tails. I have to wonder how Nicole's keeping the Sky Patrol afloat if the engines are so damaged. She sure is a magical person. Wouldn't it be smarter of Rotor to have invented an invisibility cloak and kept a thing that has emeralds and keys in it on the Sky Patrol, but invisible, so no one would be able to take it anyways? Like, was there any reason to take the emeralds and keys to the castle instead of keeping them on the Sky Patrol? Then Sally says that she's gonna take Tails' tablet and find out what exactly Tails' doll knows, as we see it tied up. And of course, Gregorius is kidnapped, much later than I assumed he'd be. Eggman tells Speedy to send the Armada after Gun's carrier, and brags to Chip that he found the entrance to the Guy Gate eventually. We didn't need to see a villain scene with Eggman. He's not a good character. Eggman tells Chip that he wants to use Dark Guy to fuel the Death Egg, and he can't do that if Chip succeeds in sealing it away, but he can't seal anything if he takes command of the Gaia Temples. But how? Chip panics as his necklace starts glowing for some reason, and his cage thing is held up. I don't get it. Why would Eggman be able to control Chip? Isn't Chip powered up now? If Eggman wants to keep Chip from sealing away Dark Gaia, why doesn't he just shoot him to death? What a moron. Couldn't he... Wouldn't it be smarter for him to cyborgize him and threaten him with being blown up or something if he doesn't do what he wants? Then he'd be able to control the Gaia Colossus and it makes sense. So an entire page is dedicated to Eggman's robot putting... to Eggman's robots putting an emerald in a Gaia temple. I don't know if it's the same robot or not. Based on what we see earlier, an emerald was put in every temple. Sonic with a super speed had no excuse not to have done this by himself a long time ago, instead of the heroes insisting on wasting time with their convoluted plan. Then we see a flood in Atabet. I don't know how I accidentally called it Apatos twice earlier, other than the fact that they both start with A and have the same amount of syllables. Every other panel showing a country is completely wasted. Eggman says that the Gaia Temples have become a Gaia Colossus. And he says that this will make controlling all the temples at once a piece of cake. Why does he want to control any temple, though? What to control? It's just a building that he could have made himself. He could have made a giant crane lift up the temples and formed them into a Gaia Colossus of his own. Would he even need the actual Gaia Temples? He could put his own mechanisms in there. He could have gathered the emerald himself, and the end result would have been the same. Again, why wouldn't he let the heroes fix most of the planet, and just leave one crack open? 
Eggman tells Metal Sonic to guard this place while he goes out, and goes into the Gaia Colossus with Chip for some reason. Sally wastes her time with Amy, and Rotor says he was able to salvage enough material to get the primary engine running, so he can get them all one fast trip. Sally says that she data mined Tails Stole, and found out that their next destination is Eggman Land, and she knows about the Gaia Colossus. Sally says that the closest gun carrier to Eggman Land got tangled up with a Battlebird Armada. Sally explains that if they fail their mission against Eggman, he'll use the energy to power his armies and poison the people. Where did that come from? Why would he poison the people when he'd have nothing to gain from it, though? He's not mass roboticizing anymore. So it's not like he's gonna do it as biological warfare so that only his robots can survive. Sally wants to delay the death egg, so she tells Rotor to throw everything he has at it with a Sky Patrol. It's about time this happened, since the hero's is death egg. Rotor says that he always wanted to manually pilot the Sky Patrol. Good thing he made it possible to manually pilot it just in case. He's smart. We see Antoine, Bunny, Sally, and Tails on the plane together on a mission to release the Dark Eye Energy. Uh, how? All because they don't want Eggman controlling it. This is not a bad story so far. I think I'm bored though, but I can't help it if it's not a creative story. Antoine says that the Badniks are powered by the Dark Eye Energy. So how does he know that? Why does he care? They're not being any different from how they would be if they were powered up by anything else. I mean, it's not like they have brand new elemental powers. Sally pragmatically says to focus on heading for the tower because there's too many robots. Why aren't they fleeing energy balls like the wolf guy did when he was powered up by Dark Eye Energy? Why aren't they just as fast as Behringer now? Tails says those energy signatures seem familiar. Is this plane gonna get shot down like in the game? We see Iota in the air shooting a missile, and Tails says that the refinery is being guarded by the same E-100 units that ambushed the heroes in the desert. Sally says the one from the train is here too. If there's too many of them at once, they won't really get to stand out or do anything interesting, right? Tails says to Sally that Radar shows the others heading their way. Sally says they need to break through this one. Then we see Sonic on airboard, I guess, on his way to go after Chip. Eggman tells Sonic that while he toyed with the idea of swatting him with the guy Colossus, it's too cumbersome. I wish he explained it. But he doesn't want Sonic to reach the head. So we had Orbot send over something to deal with him, and Sonic avoids some lasers. The story ends with Sonic being faced with the Egg Dragoon, even though I thought Eggman was in the guy Colossus controlling it. Was Chip controlling it? I guess he decided it sucked already. He should have said, it's too slow, and that's why it was cumbersome. But if it was that slow, it'd horribly suck at fighting Dark Gaia. So it'd never be made. He should have said, it's too cumbersome because Sonic's a small target, so it's inevitable that he'd miss him. Well, this thing is drawn in an intimidating way, and Eggman's even in silhouette. I know that Sonic has to be written to win against this mecha. He's destined to win against every mecha. And this is the last boss of Sonic Unleashed, basically. So because it's a game concept, and a game whose plot I already know, there's no real tension left anymore. He's guaranteed to win, and Nicole survived up to this point, so... Too bad the story was advertising a Sonic Universe arc I haven't read yet with Sally talking to Amy. That arc sounds like padding that would delay me from reading through all this much more threatening and important arc. But it's actually original, isn't it? It would be more creative than this. It'd probably be more worth reading. This issue is by Ian Flynn, and was basically the lead-up to the finale of Unleashed. Except Eggman has Chip in his clutches, and he summons the guy Colossus on him. And the heroes want to go stop him. I hate to admit it, but this is an intense and epic story. It's not like it's full of plot holes or frustrating characters. So I guess it's good? But it's not creative enough, so it's not memorable enough. The bad guys always suck in RG, all the same way, so no big difference there. If only every story in the reboot was this engaging and okay, I'd be able to take it seriously instead of dreading every issue. 